Amazon is up about 14 to 15% after hours after they've just reported their Q4 2021 earnings. And this is really interesting because there's there's a lot of money being thrown around for a stock like Amazon, which is priced at around 2700 before their earnings release for now for it to be up in the three thousands i mean that's a lot of money pouring into the stock the market has loved this earnings release so let's just jump right into it before we jump into the financials and the earnings release we're just going to take a quick look at the overall trend of amazon over the past few years and we'll see what is setting up so as you can see much like many of the other tech stocks amazon has been in a clear uptrend over the past few years and uh, just recently with the Fed announcing rate hikes and whatnot, we see that they have declined just slightly and they found support at our 150 moving average and have since bounced up from then. But things have changed since the market has closed. So if we look at this from an after hours perspective and where they are since they reported earnings, we can see that the stock has exploded from this 27, 2800 levels up into this 3200 and has since declined just ever so slightly down to this 3190 level. And this really just goes to show that the market really loved their earnings release. And so let's dive into what exactly the market loved about this earnings release. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to get into the earnings release. We're going to talk about the financials. We're going to see if this is something we as retail investors should be adding to our portfolios or not, or whether or not we can find better stocks to add to our portfolios. How's it going? Welcome to Everything Investing. I hope you're doing well. But with that being said, let's jump into their earnings release. So right off the bat, we can see Amazon beats Q4 earnings estimates. OK, and let's actually see what exactly they did. Quarterly earnings came out of twenty seven dollars and seventy five cents per share, beating analyst expectations by three dollars and eighty nine cents per share that is huge most companies they'll beat by let's say 20 cents or they'll miss right they, they beat by almost four dollars that is insane it shows their profitability their business model is stable it shows a lot of great things about amazon and Frankly, I think this is one thing the market is loving so far is this huge beat. Now, if we look at this from one year ago, they had earnings of $14 per share. They've essentially doubled their earnings in this one year time frame. That's insane for a company like Amazon to be doing this, still growing at these very high numbers. And frankly, this is what you would typically want to see in any investment that you have. Now, now that being said, we did see that the revenues came in at 137 billion for the quarter and this missed analyst expectations just very slightly 0.3%. Not much to go off there, but if we compare this to 1 year ago again, 125 billion dollars 1 year ago, that's a, that's a sizable increase. So let's go ahead and just do a deep dive of their financials. And just before we do that, the market is also loving something else about Amazon. And that is that they will be increasing the price of their Prime membership in the US from $13 a month to $15 a month. And their annual memberships will be increasing from 120 to 140. And this is the first price increase since 2019. So expect even greater growth next year because are you going to be canceling your Amazon Prime for two extra dollars? I don't think so. So you're going to be paying that. And essentially what's happening here is Amazon has just transferred all of their impairments when it comes to rate hikes, when it comes to inflation, they're transferring that cost off to you, the customer. In return, they are hoping to increase their share price. Their 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 financial metrics should also be increasing. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out uh, when it comes to this earnings report. Now, if we dive into the numbers here, here we are, we get to the statement of operations. OK, so we have product sales. And let's look at this from a, a 12 months ended perspective, just so that we can get a whole year's perspective. OK, so we start off here with about 215, 216 billion dollars worth of revenues in their product sales in 2020. This is up to 240 billion this year, almost 242 billion. This is this is great growth. This is exactly what you want to see. This is a check so far. Net service sales. So think about their Amazon Web Services, which is key for Amazon. And we'll get into that in just a second. But 170 billion up to 228 billion. That's huge, huge growth in their Amazon Web Services and Prime Services. All right. So that gives us total net sales of 386 billion, which is up to 469. Again, I don't need to keep repeating myself. This is amazing. This is exactly what you want to see. Now we get onto their cost of sales. Again, when you see your revenues are growing, you got to pay for that growth, right? So that's where this comes from. This 233 billion is up to 272 billion. Now that is a decent amount of growth. Yes. Um, but again, it's what you can expect. They have fulfillments increasing. 
technology and content. So they need to pay for their Amazon Prime content. They need to have new content every year is attracting viewership. So yeah, that's going to increase as well. Uh, marketing is increased. And yeah, we get down to here. We see their total operating expenses are at 363 billion, which is up this year, let's say to 400 $45 billion. So now when we translate this to an operating income perspective, while we had significant growth in their revenues year over year, uh, we don't see the same thing when it comes to their operating income. Okay, so this is only up about let's say $2 billion year over year. And when we look at this actually from a quarterly perspective, we're actually down. And this is interesting, since we just come out of that holiday period, you would expect these to be up. But again, we know that the sizable increase in their operating expenses is really weighing on their operating income. So anyways, we pay some taxes on that operating income and we get to net income of 21 billion last year. And now that's up to 33 billion. So for the most part, so far, so good for Amazon. Yes, we have bottom line growth. We have top line growth, but we do see some some costs that are increasing in the middle, which is blurring some of the lines. But other than that, we do see positive growth in some of the key areas. So now let's move on to their balance sheet. And actually, just before we get to their balance sheet, let's look at this from a segment perspective. OK, so North America, we can see North America is growing well. Their operating expenses are actually growing at a higher rate than their revenues, which is why year over year, we're actually going to see a decline in operating income. Same thing is true for the international sales. We're at an operating loss at this point. But that being said, Amazon Web Services is there to save the bacon for Amazon. They are up $20 billion in terms of their revenues. And when we come down to their operating income here, we can see this is actually increased by $5 billion. And when we look at this from a consolidated point of view, we can see here it's also the reason why we see this increase in net income. Now, moving on to the balance sheet, the balance sheet, the first thing that strikes me here, we see cash has actually decreased year over year. That's okay because marketable securities, another form of cash really has increased significantly. Okay, and that leads us to $160 billion, $162 billion, let's say, in total current assets. Okay, the next thing I'm looking at here is their goodwill. This is relatively flat. They probably made some form of acquisition, a small one, as Amazon usually does. Um, moving on, we'll go to their liabilities section. Total current liabilities, $142 billion, let's say. And so right away, total current can be paid for by their total current assets. That's a check mark. And when we look at their debt, we see lease liabilities of $67 billion, long-term debt of $48 billion, let's say $100 billion worth of debt. Comparing that once again up to our cash, cash on hand. Yeah, we can almost basically afford the debt with our cash on hand. So that's not a problem at all. That's another check mark. The debt is not an issue for Amazon. They can take on more debt if they wanted. It won't be an issue for shareholders. Now, for the final financial statement that we will go through today, that is the statement of cash flows. So, as you know, we had $33 billion worth of net income. We add back in some depreciation, stock-based comp, and we get to this $46 billion worth of cash provided from operating activities. Pay for the CapEx here, $61 billion worth. We actually have negative free cash flows, or in other words, we had $20 billion worth of cash outflows this year. This is key for Amazon and not what you would expect from a company that is growing their financials the way they are. Now, the thing is, though, they wanted to point out and why they put this at the top of this statement here is their cash for the period is 42 billion. So while their free cash flows are negative at the moment, they do have 42 billion dollars worth of cash sitting on the side. So when we add that back into the translation, we let's say that they have about 20 billion dollars worth of free cash flows for the year of 2021. What do they do with that? Really? Uh, not too much here. If we look at this, they've paid down some debt. And then they also took on some debt. It's pretty much flat. So they have about $20 billion worth of cash sitting on the side for you as an investor. So when it comes to evaluation, I won't use this year's free cash flow number. I will use the previous year's free cash flow number, which as we can see here is 66 minus the $40 billion in CapEx. Let's say it's about $25 billion worth in free cash flow plus the $36 billion worth of cash on the side. Let's say it's about $60 billion worth of free cash flow for the year. When I look at this from a valuation perspective, if I come over here to the market cap, we see that they're sitting at about $1.5 trillion worth in valuation. We take that $1.5 trillion number, divide that by the $60 billion worth of free cash flow. They're sitting at a price to free cash flow ratio of about 25. So you're paying 25 times 
for their further cash flow. Now, that being said, that is richly priced. The thing is here, you are paying for that growth. You're paying for the name. And that's what comes along with the investment thesis for Amazon. You have to pay that higher growth multiple. Again, they're sitting at a 54 PE ratio. So that's what you're paying for when it comes to Amazon stock. For me personally, I'm going to pass on purchasing shares here. But if we look at this from, again, a technical point of view, we can see now that the stock is up into this 3200 level, they're back into some key levels here. So we have key support at this basically $3,000 level. If the market should roll over again, we should see more support back at this 2800 level and then all the way down here at this 20 at this $2,000 level. In terms of where we're gonna look for resistance, this 3,300 level is going to hold as resistance as well as this 3,800 level. So expect some choppiness for the near future, but do expect the overall trend once again to continue higher from here. And with that being said, that's all we have for today's video. Thank you for watching if you got this far and until next time.